It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Joining me is Karen Kingsbury, a number one New York Times bestselling author who has been called America's favorite inspirational storyteller. She's here today to share the story of her work and to discuss her new book, Brush of Wings. With more than 25 million copies of her books in print, many of Karen's novels are under development with Hallmark Films and as major motion pictures. Welcome, Karen. Thank you so much for joining us. Aw, thank you for having me. Karen, it is such an honor to have you here because you have an amazing career. You have more than 25 million copies of your books in print, and you have movies in development, and every time I turn on the Hallmark Channel, there's your name. So when you began your career, did you always want to be a novelist? And could you have ever imagined that you would have reached this level of success? Well, you know, just to show the power that parents have over their kids, my dad and my mom believed in me at such a young age that my work would become well-known and that people would, you know, understand it and come to love it. So when I was maybe 12 or 13, my dad said he read a short story that I'd written, and I was always writing from the time I was five. And uh, my my dad read it, and he just got tears in his eyes, and he said, Karen, one day everyone is going to know you're writing. And when that happens, I want you to remember that there's no autograph lines in heaven. So don't ever believe it. When you get to be the place where people are talking about your name, just remember that, you know, you're no better than anyone else in terms of the jobs God gives us to do. We all have a purpose and a calling. But at the same time, you, you've been just set apart to do this. So I think from that point on, you know, and he would say someone has to be the next best-selling author, and it might as well be you. I loved that. And he believed that I would be that one that would, that would uh, you know, make it as an author. And, and I believed it. I prayed about it. And I could see it happening like this, but I just knew it would always be in God's timing. Karen, what was your journey like when you began sending out books? What did you experience? Well, I mean, I began my journey a little bit different probably because I was a reporter first. So I started off as a journalist and I, we were having, starting our family and I wanted to be home with our first child. And so we just began to pray that I would have a way to write at home instead of having to go to an office. So my first four books were really an answer to prayer, but they were true crime books which I never really read. I never read true crime. I never saw myself writing books like that. And uh, they were cautionary tales, but not really any redemption or hope in them. And after four books of kind of being surrounded by darkness, I just Mm -hmm. knew I wanted to write about the light and about how God brings redemption and hope into our stories, even when the ending isn't happy. So, um, yeah, I had, a, I had my first novel in my heart, and I wrote that novel without really a lot of, rep- at that point, my agent who'd been representing me didn't want to represent me with any kind of Christian fiction, so sort of on my own. Mm-hmm. And it took about a year where, um, you know, after about a year of submitting the manuscript, and I had many rejection letters, mainly from New York publishers, kind of saying, well, you know, there's no sex or language, like, we loved it, but mm-hmm. we just can't publish it. And after that, uh, finally, I got my contract. So I would say for inspiring, you know, aspiring authors, novelists, I would say write the story. Write the story that's on your heart and then hone it and work with author groups, get with critique groups to make it the very best possible book. And then don't quit knocking on doors until you get a yes. Karen, I read that you had an encounter with an angel. Was that the inspiration for what was to come? Well, I really believe so. This is the first time I've written about angels as characters, and it's really because of what happened uh, seven years ago. My dad was sitting in his lazy boy chair reading on a summer afternoon, and he had a sudden massive heart attack. Just one minute, eyes open, next he was out. My nephew, Andrew, at 12 years old, he was home at the time. 
And uh, so was my mom. And my nephew realized something was very wrong. So he called 911 and they walked him through giving my dad CPR. So we gave him CPR for 15 minutes until the paramedics arrived. And when they did, my dad was blue. He was non-responsive, no heartbeat. And my nephew ran into the next room and he began to cry. I mean, just 12 years old, but he thought he'd failed somehow that he was going to be responsible for my dad's death. And the paramedics are working, working feverishly, the frenzied pace in the house. And a police officer comes in and he runs up to my mom and he says, ma'am, do you believe in Jesus? Mm-hmm. And she's like, I think the oh, craziest moment, you know, of the whole scene. And she says, yes, yes, we do. And he said, well, then we need to pray that the power that raised Lazarus from the dead would breathe life into your husband right now so that that young man out there doesn't grow up thinking it was his fault. So he prays his powerful prayer and he says, in Jesus' name, amen. Just at that moment in the next room, they say, we've got a heartbeat. Miraculously, my dad came back around and they took him to the hospital. He lived another eight weeks. We had beautiful moments with him, praying with him, singing hymns, laughing and reminiscing. And Andrew was the hero of the story. Um, It was a beautiful time. And when he went home to heaven, we were all with full hearts that we had had that time with my dad. Mm-hmm. Well, then my mom decided to look, up, to look up this police officer. She had his name and his badge number, so she called the police station. And they said, ma'am, we have never had a police officer by that name, and we've never assigned that badge number to anyone. You know, Karen, as I'm listening to your story, I'm actually getting chills because I believe in everything that you just described and that angels are around us and that they guide us and they have a role in our life. I do, too. You know, I read in, in Hebrews, in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, In chapter 13, it says, Be careful to entertain strangers, for in doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. And that speaks to me on a lot of levels because it means that angels, at least at some point, they look like us or they can look like us. They can interact. They can help with a rescue or bring a message of encouragement or some direction. And we might not even notice. Karen, I had Paul Young on the show, the author of The Shack, and Paul shared with me stories that his readers told him about how The Shack impacted their lives. Do you ever receive feedback from your readers, and what types of stories do they tell you? Well, that's the most amazing part, I really believe. Um, You know, it's, it's something that I hear daily and just floods of mail that come in through Facebook, through through Twitter and Instagram, but through email and through snail mail. They're writing and they're saying a relationship in their life was saved or they have hope now where they were in despair before or now they can see the redemption at work or, you know, there was a healing in terms of a relationship that took place. And and this is just a repeated theme that comes across and it, it's never, uh, never gets old. You know, it's always a reminder. God puts a story on my heart, but he has their hearts in mind. And that makes me such a small part of what's going on. And an example would be uh, with the Angels Walking series, the, the first book in the series, which is called Angels Walking, was given to one man at a federal prison in Lubbock, Texas, Montford Prison. And I, of course, I didn't know anything about this happening. And this man was, uh, I mean, there's 400 men in this prison. They're all there, uh, mostly for life. They've done very serious crimes they've been convicted of, and they're very hard-hearted for the most part. It's a tough place to be. This man reads my book, Angels Walking, and this prisoner drops to his knees. He, he begins to weep in his cell. He realizes that if he'd read it 20 years earlier, he wouldn't be in prison. He would be a different man, and he gives his life over to God. And then he makes a call to action for people who are volunteers outside of the prison. Please bring more of Karen Kingsbury's books. And they begin to answer the call. And now there are 37 books of mine that are circulating, including the new one, circulating through that prison. And 100 men out of the 400, 100 men have given their lives over to God. They've said they want to make a change in their life. They want to make an impact, whatever they can do, even behind bars. They're meeting together. They're sharing their stories. They're openly talking, crying. I mean, I hear stories like that. and I'm just blown away. As you asked earlier, you know, did I picture it? I pictured that the books would, would reach a place where people would know them. Yes. But I didn't picture this kind of life change. It's, it's um, all God, and it takes, me, it takes my breath away every time I read a story like that. Those are just your books. I mean, I joked before about every time I turn on Hallmark, there's your name in one of your stories. But just imagine how many lives through not only the, the, the books, but the movies. And, and as I said, there, there are so many of your stories now that are in production through Hallmark and major motion pictures. And when you see 
your story being played out on the screen. What is that like for you? And are you involved in the process? Yes, they let me be involved. The, the producers who worked on these, uh, the Bridge Part 1 and the Bridge Part 2, that have recently been on Hallmark, um, Dan Angel and David Rosemont, they're Emmy Award-winning producers, and they have a heart for my stories. So they love them, and they want the stories to come across just like the book, and they that shows. And then uh, they'll send me pictures of people when they're in casting, and they'll say, we're thinking about Faith Ford for Donna. What do you think? And I'm like, oh, Faith Ford is the best. She's amazing. <laughs> so, you know, they, they ask my input. And uh, Ted McGinley, he was, he was uh, Charlie in the recent movie, The Bridge Part Two, that they had. It's just, they're amazing actors. It's literally, I'm watching this play out on the screen. And I'm thinking, it's just like it was lifted out of my heart. And, and I mean, I can barely breathe through the process. I'm wiping tears. I'm sitting with my family. And life couldn't be more full. So, Karen, before we run out of time, tell us about your new book, Brush of Wings. So, Brush of Wings begins with a town meeting in heaven, where a team of angels that specializes in desperate matters of the heart has been assembled, and four of them are going to be assigned to go to Earth and interact with four main characters uh, in the book. And these are young adults that are in the midst of trying to figure out love and life. And in the case of the main character, Mary Catherine, a tragedy that she's going through that looks like she may not have long to live. And because of that, the angels have a lot to do. There's a desperate mission at hand and they need to do uh, to work overtime. And there's no guarantee that the mission will succeed. There's a, there's a lot at stake. So it is a love story, but it's so much caught up in the middle of a, of a life story that um, is playing out and people are resonating with that. Karen, thank you so much for being here with us. If you'd like to learn more about the book or about Karen and her other work, you can visit her website, karenkingsbury.com. Karen, in 30 seconds or less, what do you want to leave our listeners with? Well, I would like them to remember, and this is the message I think you can get from Brush of Wings, is there's more going on than what you see. We are so tempted sometimes to think life is a series of getting up and going to work and coming home, doing the dishes, paying the bills. It's so much more than that. You only have today. You aren't guaranteed tomorrow. Yesterday's gone. So today, look for the miraculous. It'll change your life. Karen, again, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your inspiration. It's such an important message, and I think that it's something that many of us forget. So I'm very happy that you were here for this wonderful reminder. Well, thank you. And let's do it again. I so enjoy being on the show. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7 Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.